Howdy, it's Insomniac. Before I get started, I want to clear up any confusion about me showing up on this channel. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a good friend of Dink's. I've been featured in a handful of Dink's videos in the past, but the Deadshot video from a little while ago is the first one that I personally produced for his channel. I'll be showing up every once in a while, so don't be surprised if you hear from me again. Now, on to the topic of discussion. This tutorial aims to make you a better player by helping you to understand the thought process that goes into constructing your combos, not in the lab, but in a match. This isn't your basic B&B video. What I'm going to be teaching here is how to do combos the way the pros do. This tutorial will cover three separate kinds of optimization. First, we're going to be looking at optimizing damage, then Oki, and then Yomi. And if you don't know what those last two terms are, don't worry, we'll be getting to them soon. We're going to start with the classic optimization, damage. The basic question is, which combo does the highest damage? But we're going to be taking it an extra step by asking this question. Should I go for the setup? For those of you who don't know, a setup refers to a scenario wherein an opponent has to correctly guess what you will do to avoid taking damage. This is typically initiated by ending your combo in a way that prepares you to start a guessing game. One thing to keep in mind though, is that you typically have to sacrifice the damage of the initial combo in order to create the setup. And that's why it's so important to determine whether or not it's a prudent decision to go for the setup. Now to answer our initial question, we're going to have to talk about expected damage. Expected damage is basically the expected value of a setup. It's a probabilistic method to compare the value of a situation with many possible scenarios, and the algorithm is very simple. You multiply the damage of each scenario by the probability of that scenario occurring, then add up the values of all those respective products to get expected damage. Now if that sounded like a mouthful of gibberish, you can rest assured I have an example ready. You're playing Green Lantern, and you get a hit with your back 1-3. You have one bar of meter. What do you do? Option 1 is to complete the combo. Option 2 is to opt for a setup. Keep in mind that this part of the sequence is a 50-50. Let's take out wake-ups and delayed wake-up out of the equation and just say your opponent is going to block left or right, so it'll hit 50% of the time. So we add the damage of the initial combo plus 0.5 times the hit damage plus 0.5 times the block damage of the forward three. You'll see that option one is actually the better of the two in this case. But does that mean that you should never go for the setup? Let's look at the same scenario again, but this time you have zero bars of meter for the combo. As you can see, the setup is situationally useful. You will mostly want to use the setup if you don't have any meter to continue your combo. When it comes to optimizing damage, the key takeaway is that it's oftentimes better to take the guaranteed damage than to gamble for a higher damaging setup. Oki is short for the Japanese term Okiseme, and Okiseme in and of itself is a portmanteau of two phrases. Okiru, which means get up, and seme, which means attack. Thus, okiseme roughly translates to attack upon getting up. Basically, oki describes your next move as your opponent is getting up from being knocked down. Oki is a very important component in maintaining your momentum during the course of a match. The question we're going to want to ask ourselves is, where do I want to be? The highest damage combo may cause you to lose your offense if it doesn't have enough advantage to continue pressure. Green Lantern's wake up is easy to stuff as Black Adam. Limiting space is an important part of beating Green Lantern, so keeping him in the corner is ideal. This is the standard combo. I prefer to do a less damaging one that puts Hal in the corner. 
The Joker destroys Black Adam in the corner. It's very risky to be even facing the corner because Joker can easily reverse the positioning and put you in a really bad situation. Thus, I prefer to use this combo to bring us back to mid-screen, where Black Adam holds more of an advantage. When it comes to optimizing Oki, the key takeaway is this. Unless the combo is going to kill, you should never sacrifice the advantage for damage. Yomi is the Japanese term for reading. In the context of fighting games, this means reading the mind of your opponents. That's where the phrase making a read comes from. The question that we're going to want to ask ourselves is, what is my opponent going to do? Or more specifically, what is my opponent going to do while they're in the middle of my combo? Oftentimes, they're going to try to escape. The first consideration is your opponent's tendency to air escape. You'll want to prepare yourself by knowing at what point during a combo your opponent is likely to do so. In some cases, you can proactively prepare yourself. As Black Adam, your opponent will likely air escape immediately after me to burn black magic. You can hold your forward 3 or back 3 before letting it loose. If your opponent decides to air escape, you can easily react for a punish. The other consideration is predicting when your opponent is likely to clash. Just because your opponent is on their second life bar doesn't mean that they are going to clash. So going for the unclashable damage the moment you see a red bar is not always the optimal move. As the flash, your highest damage combos will come from a hit confirm into traits. You'll build enough meter that this two bar combo will leave you with one bar afterward. And as you can see, it's an overall bad situation for your opponent. So they're likely to clash the moment you confirm into trait. So instead of seeing the combo you just saw, you're more likely to see this. Time to make some changes. Don't make it easy. If your opponent follows this tendency, and they most likely will, you can play a game of chicken with them. Even though you have trait, don't spend it. See how long they're willing to go before they relent. Even if they do decide to clash, you still have trait ready, and another chance to get them with the big damage, this time without the threat of clash. As Firestorm, your opponent will likely clash the moment you activate level 3 trait to reset the neutral and leave you with an empty trait bar. I hope this Opponents pretty much do this all the time. This up. shit is more prevalent than a herpes outbreak in the college during midterms. You can instead choose not to activate trait, and continue the combo. If they decide not to clash, they took more damage and you still have trait. If they do clash, they reset the neutral, but you still have trait. You can play a very similar mind game to the flash example you just saw. Maybe you know your opponent is going to clash the next combo no matter what. You can choose to do a single hit into bounce cancel to net yourself a guaranteed punish. You could also throw your opponent for your punish. This is especially important because a throw punish cannot be teched. If the move is at least minus 10 and within the range of your throw, your opponent can't do anything to stop it. When it comes to optimizing Yomi, the key takeaway is this. The better prepared you are for your opponent's defensive options, the more likely you are to maintain your offense. Let's review the three optimizations we covered. For damage, it's often better to take the guaranteed damage than to gamble for a higher damaging setup. For Oki, unless the combo is going to kill, you should never sacrifice the advantage for damage. For Yomi, the better prepared you are for your opponent's defensive options, the more likely you are to maintain your offense. To summarize, the key to optimizing your combos is knowing what you need the most. Optimal combos optimize the situation, not just damage. And that concludes this tutorial. If you like this video, leave a like, because it helps Dink out a lot. Please consider subscribing to my channel as well. If you have any ideas for future videos, you can reach out to me on Twitter. Hashtag Bonox, and we'll see you next time. Peace.